Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach, and today we are going to be talking all about the seven things that instructional coaches maybe should avoid throughout the year. First of all, I want to say congratulations to everybody out there who's been getting instructional coaching jobs, getting their first job. There's a lot of chatter out on our Facebook groups and all around social media about, hey, I just got my first job. What do I do next? That is why I'm excited to have not one, but two, but three amazing instructional coaches on today to talk about some of the pitfalls of the instructional coaching program. You definitely want to check this entire conversation out the last one look i was surprised when this got when when this one hit the list but you definitely want to stay around you might even want to take some notes for this there's a lot of great things happening over on teacher cast these days lots of great podcasts of course if you're still listening to ask the tech coach there's other ones um, on our channel called the digital learning today if you're an instructional coach or digital learning leader check that one out and we've had some amazing guests over on the jeff bradbury podcast so check out everything over at teachercast.net forward slash podcast today. We are pumping out about five or six shows a week, and we would love to have you guys like and subscribe all of our shows and check them out on your favorite podcast player today. My first guest is somebody who I've had the pleasure of getting to know over the last few weeks. She's an amazing instructional coach, and she is here not with herself, but with her entire team of instructional coaches. I want to bring on today my good friend, Miss Alyssa Zajac. Alyssa, how are you today? Welcome to TeacherCast. I am doing well, Jeff. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we are super excited. I am so excited that you are here today. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are an instructional coach in a school district. Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing these days. Yeah, um, so I'm an instructional coach in a school district on the south side of Chicago. Um, we have a amazing team, um, an instructional coaching team that consists of seven coaches. And, you know, we, we work together all the time. We're constantly meeting, we're constantly, you know, brainstorming, connecting with each other. And um, so we, we've tried a lot of different things. We have worked on several different models of coaching and kind of formed what has worked for us as a team. Um, and we are always constantly looking to grow, right? We're looking to grow our practice. We're looking to be better instructional coaches. How can we best support our teachers, our district, and ultimately students? Um, and we're always looking for good professional development, which can be hard to find. Coaching is um, it's unique. And so as our team has been looking for things, we thought, you know what? We're, we're pretty great at this. We've been doing this a while. We have an established team. Um, so, so me and my girls, we started our own program. Um, we are creative solutions coaching and we are here to support new coaches, veteran coaches, um, teachers, uh, really anyone looking to grow their practice. I love the idea of having a group of coaches get together and support each other, not only in their own districts, but out. You mentioned that you have some friends with you today. Who did you bring with you today? I brought my good friend, Ashley Summer. Hi, Jeff. So, if you want to introduce yourself. Welcome to the show, Ashley. How are you today? I am so awesome. It is a, we are, we're at the home stretch of the school mm. year and we are, um, but we are so excited. Um, Creative Solutions Coaching, we've really looked at um, supporting coaches, teachers, people who are interested in coaching. Um, and like Alyssa said, just really wanting to grow our students and grow practice. Um, but in real time, we've tried all of these things and we really taken all of um, the work that we've done over the years and said, this works and this can work um, for other districts and other coaches. 
I am so excited about the great stuff that you guys are doing. And, and Alyssa, you brought another friend with you too, didn't you? I did. I brought Miss Tiffany Washington. She is amazing. So Tiffany, go ahead and introduce yourself. Absolutely. I love this. Amazing. I, that is a word I will accept for sure. <laughs> so yes, it has been a pleasure working on the team. We are a team of confident coaches who want to make sure that everyone else also feels confident as they grow in their practice. And so it has been a pleasure to work with other coaches, to continue to do so, and to continue to grow ourselves and grow relationships. Uh, it seems like, Jeff, with this podcast, you're about educating others and joining the community and that's what we're about as well so offering great pd that is going to be a to do but yes i am tiffany washington instructional coach at uh, the junior high level and it's been a pleasure to work in many roles this year now many coaches right now are looking forward to starting that new position and some of them are going to be lucky enough to be working with a team. I'm curious, what advice would you all have for coaches who are work coming into a brand new program and suddenly are surrounded by a bunch of veteran coaches who have been doing this for a while? What advice do you have for those coaching newbies out there? I, you know, going into a new coaching role, it, it can be, it can be intimidating, especially if you're joining a team of, of veteran coaches. Um, I think going, going forward and going into it, um, just ready to learn, uh, ready to watch, watch the magic happen, um, and see the benefits of coaching and, and what it can truly be. Um, I think, you know, sometimes taking a step back and just watching, observing, um, and getting comfortable with, with your transition from the classroom to a coaching role. Um, it's very different pieces that are the same, um, you know, but going with it open-minded, knowing that it is going to be a, a big change for you. Um, but you know, you got a team to support you, whether they're veteran coaches, new coaches, um, and yeah, we've got it. Got it. Ashley, Ashley, if you're work, walking into a group of coaches for the first time, what questions would you want to ask them on that first get together? So it's so cool. So I actually, so part of the interesting part of our role is that we, we work together during the day, but since I've recently gone into a new school district, that is the exact experience, even as a veteran coach that I had to do. And I think that the most powerful part was asking questions. That's part of our role as instructional coaches when we're working with teachers. But I asked so many questions this year of, you know, from little day-to-day -day things then to, you know, bigger parts of, you know, what has this process looked like before I've gotten here? You know, how have you grown really being able to see how the whole entire program, whether it's been a year, two, seven, 10, 15, however long the program's been, I really wanted to know what is the journey been and making sure that that question's been asked. Because we've seen in, you know, our school district, we saw every single step of the way because we were living in it but coming into something new it's a different ball game and as uh, for ashley as, as far as you know getting yourself assimilated in there um do you try to show off do you try to just hang back do you try to lead a little bit do you take that first year off and just kind of watch ashley what advice do you have for that first year you know i think well, that also really connecting with your principal. I think that mm. that has been a huge piece for me is, you know, talking through getting a plan together. Um, I, we work so in, in all of our buildings, except for, you know, the junior high that everyone is solo, but, you know, when it comes down to, you know, in my building, that principal support has been key, but I also feel like with my team of, I spend a lot of time listening and, you know, and asking the question still with them because whereas I have a lot of background in coaching, they have a background in the school district. So I feel like it's that give and that take. Tiffany, 
Ashley just mentioned a little bit about working with her administrator. What advice, Tiffany, do you have for coaches working with their first administrator, maybe even being in their first position where they're kind of eye to eye with an administrator? How do you survive that in the first couple of weeks? Absolutely. I mean, I think the first thing you want to do is to put on your service hat. Um, people love when you're coming to the table wanting to solve a problem and to provide a service. And so getting their vision of what, how they see you being utilized, what pain points they have, what problems can you solve? By having those conversations ahead of time, that gives you an idea of what this administrator is actually hoping you're going to be in your role as a coach. And so that may be one of the ways that I would go. You need to have a conversation, kind of secure some set times with the principal, letting them know you're available and you're willing to uh, meet with them as often as you would, you, you need to. Now, now, Tiffany, some coaches are new at this. Some t coaches, of course, are veterans. I, I think more of the veteran coaches know when to, and I don't want to put this the wrong way, but push their administrator around rather than be pushed by their administrator. Do, do you have any suggestions on how to start to massage that? A lot of administrators might just say, you're my coach. Thanks. I'll see you in June. And some administrators don't yet realize that they are eye to eye with the coach. And this is a partnership that we're now forming. Absolutely. And with that partnership, the one thing that you can agree upon is the growth of the student and uh, kind of focusing on that, maybe a way to kind of start that conversation, letting them know like, okay, I'm coming here and bringing things to the table as your partner. Uh, you know, sometimes the vocabulary that you use kind of helps as well. Partnership, growth of students, growth of our school district, you know, using some of those vision statements and back to make sure to have your point. And so that is one way to start that conversation eye to eye with your principal, letting them know, you know, the experience level that you're bringing to the table and that you are willing to serve. Now, Alyssa, you and I've talked a lot about this. You know, we've both been coaches for a little bit of time at this point. And I think we can agree. There are a lot of things that are universal that instructional coaches should be doing right but there's also some things that I think we should always keep in mind that we need to avoid. Now, I'm so happy today we're going to be talking about a number of things, seven things that instructional coaches should always kind of keep on their list to avoid. Talk a little bit about how you and your team put together this list of things that an instructional coach might want to avoid during the year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we, we've had a lot of conversations, you know, as a team, um, some of us have been coaching longer than others, and we've kind of all of ex all experienced that awkwardness of a new coach, or um, you know, we've all experienced that awkward conversation with an administrator, or um, even someone that we're coaching. And so we kind of looked at our own pain points as a team, and also just from hearing from other coaches, you know, from um, whether it's social media groups, uh, coaches in other districts, what are things that maybe you're having a difficult time with. Um, and that's how we formed our list of seven things to avoid. Uh, Tiffany just talked a little bit about, you know, that that relationship with the principal, which goes into our first tip of not having clear roles and boundaries. Um, I think first things first, having that that clear cut boundary with your administration team. Um, what is my role? What is my expectation? Um, how to not cross the line in that role, because you do walk kind of that fine line between coach, administrator, teacher. Um, so I think the first thing to establish even before the school year starts, if you're a new coach, is sitting down with your conversation with your principal admin, having a conversation of what coaching is going to look like in your school, or in your district, um, and how to make sure that we're not crossing boundaries between, um, you know, teachers, coaches, administration, and really making sure that that we're set up for for success as coaches, um, because we want to build relationships with teachers and, and we definitely want to have those clear roles and boundaries. But Alyssa, that's really difficult. You know, I, I've talked a lot about this on the show. For many coaches, it's the beginning of the year, first day of the staff meeting. Every new teacher or coach gets to stand up and they say, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm the science teacher. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm the whatever. Mm hmm. 
But there's never that opportunity that I've come across where at that moment, the principal gets up and says, Alyssa is our new coach. This is what I'm expecting of her. This is what she's going to be doing for you. They know what they want from you. You know what you want from you. But how often is it that a principal actually tells the staff, this is the game plan? So, so I love that this is the first thing here. Ashley, what advice do you have for anybody? We were talking again about, you know, having those conversations with your principals. I think one of those big first conversations is, here's the best way to introduce me so we can create the role that we want rather than me having to explain myself 30 times to 30 different teachers who may or may not want me you need to do it, Mr. Principal, Mrs. Principal. Ashley, what advice do you have for helping to set up those new relationships so the boundaries can be set and the expectations can be exactly what the building wants? I have to tell you that the power of the principal support shown this year from being new and also a newer coaching program that I was walking into, mm-hmm. I can't tell how much business, and we're going to talk a little bit about that but the business that I gained from the coaches so so in my coaching role I was able to do that I did that beautiful presentation half the people probably listened um but then the power came of when we were sitting in meetings and my principal always going back to but remember that's what Ashley said that she would do remember that something that she can and support you with so we hear that people need to hear something like seven times nine ways and nine times seven ways and that was exactly what i thought was the key to the success i in a new building building trust i did not have minutes to spare in my day because i was going from room to room and that that was where the power was Now, Tiffany, my question to you going back to this conversation is how does a coach say to their principal, I need you to say this to the staff? Absolutely. And that's why you even relationship starts with the principal um, as well. You want to have you could even have a pre-meeting prior to this where you've established Mm -hmm. those um, expectations and. You're like, hey, we both agree I'm not evaluative. That's something that teachers probably are going to want to hear from you. We both agree. So establishing those clear roles in that pre-meeting is going to help that conversation and that presentation to be even more smooth. And so those are the things that you want to bring up when it's what do you what does it seem like a day in the life of a coach? How do you see that, Mr. or Mrs. Principal? I agree. Make sure that we express that in the presentation to the to the staff and letting the principal know, hey, these are some of the pain points that the teachers in those seats might be feeling as to why they may not want to work with me. And I truly need you to express I'm not evaluative. I need you to express that I'm available. I need you to express all of that. And so those are some opportunities you could have in a pre-meeting with the principal. It's amazing how easy a school year could be if in the first five minutes of that faculty meeting, the principal says, your expectation is to work with these people rather than the coach spending all year trying to beg people to work with them. Not that I'm talking from experience about that, but it just goes so far. And that goes in with our second feature here, Alyssa, about prioritizing relationships and not prioritizing relationships. That relationship you have with your principal is key, but having the right relationship with your teachers, right? Again, you're not evaluative. You're not their administrator. You're not their peer because you're not also a fifth grade teacher. Talk to us a little bit about that relationship component here. Yeah, I mean, as a as a coach, new coach, veteran coach, teacher, relationships are are the number one priority. Um, you know, personally, I feel like with with coaching, uh, it's it's scary to put yourself out there to work with a coach. Um, people are being vulnerable by doing that, and I think in order for someone to truly feel comfortable um, and be willing to let you in their classroom, let you into their struggles 
they have to have a relationship with with you. Um, I mean, the first few weeks of school, it's it's getting in their classrooms, introducing yourself, getting to know them, um, and, and sometimes just sitting around and, and talking with them about non-school related things. Let's about, talk about what we have in common. What are things you like to do? What are things that um, you know you you want for your future and yourself? And and really focusing on uh, not so much the task at hand of coaching and education, but building a personal relationship with people is going to go a long way. Uh, it takes down walls uh, and barriers that they put up. And I, I think before you can truly do any deep coaching, um, you you have to build relationships. Teachers have to trust you. The third thing on the list, Ashley, is inactive coaching. Now, this one had me scratching my head. Um, Ashley, what exactly do you mean by inactive coaching? So the sitting back, relaxing, enjoying the ride. And, and that really, that, that kind of attitude in coaching, you know, I look at coaching as, as your first sales job. Right. Like, and, you know, in teaching your, yeah, you're selling, you're selling content. You want kids to learn, but you're really diving deep. And that's what you want to do with teachers, but they're not just sitting in your class. We're, we're talking with adults and teachers themselves, their time, you know, we've always heard like, we want more time. We want more time. And so if you're going to use their time, you know, we've got to go in and say, this is worth your while. This is something that you need. Um, serving teachers, um, whether that be just a, you know, a note um, or, you know, a quick, you know, digital copy, um, you know, having, you know, teachers at, you know, staff meetings, you know, getting some feedback when you're walking around, you know, in, um, in groups, you know, even just listening in the lunchroom, figuring out what they need. And, you know, starting to create menus. If you're slow, then, you know, put by the copy machine, you know, things that you can do um, to help them offering, you know, something maybe a little bit more if you're feeling a little slow in business, but really drumming up that business and getting people to get on board um, a little goes a long way. You know, one of the things that I always tell coaches is you are an entrepreneur, you, know, you are the business owner. You are you are a business of one, and you have to start thinking of yourself that way. It's not always about the first person who comes in the door. It's about that repeat business. Who's who's the first customer that comes back a second time, and how do you build that relationship? Because that's the one that's going to grow legs and is going to say to their friends, "Come back and come back and come back." Now, Alyssa, the the, the next thing on the list, of course, is kind of the opposite: talking too much. Why should coaches not be talking too much during these relationship building exercises? Yeah, it's my personal favorite on the list. I am a talker. I can talk to a wall all day long. I mean, I, coaches, they love to talk. Teachers love to talk. Um, but there's that fine line between coaching and just blabbing and talking too much. And we love to call it being the advice monster. Great idea to talk a lot and have conversations when you're building those relationships. But when we're in those coaching conversations or when we're trying to find those pain points, um, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should be listening twice as much as we talk as coaches. Um, you know, we tend to want to solve problems as coaches. Uh, we want to give people a quick answer or, a, oh, this worked for me in my classroom. We don't want to do that as coaches. Our goal as a coach is to get our teachers to come up with those ideas themselves. We want to ask good questions. You want to come prepared with questions that are open-ended, not a yes or no question. Um, we want people to talk and open up. So again, I'm probably going against my role right now and talking too much because that's what I do. And that's why it's my favorite. Um, but really listen, Are the one of the best tools I can give to somebody as a coach is just to sit back and listen to your teachers. Ask a question, pause, using the power of pause and just letting them tell you what's on their mind. And you're going to you're going to find a lot of things that you can help support them. in if you just sit back and let them talk. And that's so important for coaches, right? Because oh, yeah. they want to jump in. They want to say everything. They want to be the ones. 
you know, they're always out there wagging their tails, which is exactly what we should be doing. Like, look at me, look at me, look at me. But at the same time, it's, I'll, I'll say it this way. It's always hard to not put your hands on the keyboard, right? Let them do it. Now that, that of course goes into the next one here, which is trying to do it all right. Mm -hmm. I have a great idea. I built the template. Here's the lesson plan. Would you like me to come in and show you I'm the coach? I can do it for you. You sit in the back. I got it covered. Mm -hmm. Why should coaches try not to do it all? Yeah, we um we like to in our our little team we like to call this packaging up and giving it to them with a big red bow. <laughs> you know, here again, here's that lesson plan, here's that strategy. I'm going to model it. Um that's it's great. Um but doing it all is not going to necessarily help your teachers grow and learn how to do it on their own. Um we want to support, we want to model, but then we want to pull back. Um and and being okay also you know trying to do it all uh, again we love to solve problems uh nobody wants to get asked a question that they don't know the answer to um that's just human nature but as a coach it's going to happen and instead of giving somebody a response or an answer or a solution that that may be instant it's okay as a coach to say you know what i don't know the answer to that question let me find out pause go back to your office, research it, and then come back to them with a solution or point them to the direction of somebody who does know it. Um, it's perfectly okay as a coach to say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that, but you know who does and send them, uh, send them on their way. Um, and that's a hard thing as a coach. You wanna do it all, you wanna know it all, but it is a-okay to not know it all. Talking today about the seven things that you want to avoid as an instructional coach, just to give a recap here, number one, having unclear roles and boundaries. Number two, trying not to prioritize relationships. Number three, inactive coaching. Number four, talking too much. Number five, trying to do it all. And I think between six and seven, seven's the one that I'm excited to talk about today, but six is my favorite one for all of the topics we've done here on almost 270 episodes for every coach that's looking for communication support, that's looking for how do I make that website? How do I make that newsletter? Do I put stuff in my Google Drive? Where do I put on it? Tiffany, the next one here is not being prepared. How can an instructional coach, especially a new instructional coach, make sure that they are as best prepared for the position or any of the experiences as possible? Absolutely. So when you're a new coach, you may be approached in the hallway, you may be approached, and you're so excited to get some business that you'll take it anywhere. Yes. And then you're trying to have a meeting really quickly. You haven't done the preparation, you don't have a system in place, but you were just so happy to get the business, right? It happens very often. We'll take any business in the beginning. You want to make sure that you give yourself the opportunity to put in your schedule some time for you to be prepared for whatever meeting you're going to actually do. So if that means having an agenda, having notes, having done the research, um, I know I can admit for myself, first year, you're so excited, you're in there, and then you're like, okay, they just told me this five minutes ago, and now I'm going to try to solve all their problems <laughs> in five minutes. Um, no, you should have given yourself some time to do that preparation ahead of time. And then even afterwards, because the reflection piece is part of the being prepared too. you're prepared for the next meeting, give your some time in your schedule, block the time in your schedule, so that you actually can prepare for that next meeting. Think about what just happened. What do I need to do moving forward? But instead, we're so happy to get business that you're trying to move to the next meeting. Next meeting. So every meeting is every 10 minutes or every 20 or every 30 or whatever else. You want to put time in there for the preparation, for the research, for the reflection and schedule your time accordingly. So be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that was so, a good one. It's so, it's so hard to... You know, we look at like we've all experienced being also in that big building, right? Like you might be an instructional coach and you're hired and you're it. 
you're it for 300, 500 kids, 40 adults. And, you know, how do you balance it all? And I think, you know, really, you know, looking at a way to schedule people out, I, I think as an adult and as an adult learner, we also have to know that like it, you know, there's some things that are a priority and there's also some things that sometimes people will put things as a priority for themselves as a teacher, but then they have some time to figure it out and then they figure it out themselves, you know? And so it might not be at the top of the priority list, but then if you maybe didn't follow through and, you know, reflect and plan, you know, pre-plan, then it just then it becomes messy. And so really utilizing that time and prioritizing what you absolutely need to do and schedule yourself out, you'll thank yourself later. Mm. Absolutely, Ashley. And, and you know, a part of being prepared, um, you guys touched on it a little bit, um, utilizing agendas, uh, that's been hu a huge um, area of growth for our team. Um, we started focusing on, we made our own growth model, we call it. Um, and it's an agenda we use going into meetings. Um, and it's just a structure for how we schedule our meetings with teachers, whether it's for a cycle, whether it's just a, Hey, can you help me with this? Or, um, you know, depending on how your district does it, we meet, you know, with all of our new teachers once a week, but we have a set designated meeting time. It's in our Google calendar. We send a reminder ahead of time. Um, we share the agenda with our teachers ahead of time so that you don't go into the meeting. Nobody's looked at the agenda. No one knows what they're talking about. That gives a little prompt. Um, so that's part of us being prepared, um, having some question stems in place that you know you're going to kind of ask. Uh, that really helps us guide the conversation and, and not sit there in silence or nobody has anything to talk about. It gives you some, some time to process and think through what the meeting is going to look like ahead of time. So here it is. We've gone through six of them. Let's hit the final seventh one. I think this is the hardest one. I really, really do. For all the, the new coaches who are out there, especially the ones who are used to, you know, being in the classroom, maybe the ones that are expecting that every Monday afternoon PD is going to be their next ISTE session. I, I, Ashley, I'll let you say what this one is. What is the biggest thing that we could be worrying about or not just avoiding, I'll put it that way, as an instructional coach? Building relationships is my first, is my first number one. My second, my second, and it's such a close one, is when I'm giving PD and when I'm hearing PD, I can't be talked at like I'm a kid. And it's the hardest thing, right? Because we're we're experts in working with children of all ages but given a call back and expecting you know adults to sit and respond the last thing you want is an eye roll and that's at that point of you could be selling the best pd and you you said it you are the entrepreneur of right you are you are that of yourself and also sometimes you're also having to sell ideas, whether it be yours or a district's, but really getting teachers to buy in of saying, you are owning this information that I'm giving you and you're going to do something with it and it's going to be your responsibility to listen, I think is is powerful and it's hard as teachers to, to kind of take that control away, right? We want everyone to listen to us but we're, they're adults. Yeah. And, and this is a one, difficult two, three. one, two, three, all eyes on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. They're going to start rolling their eyes um, for sure. And I've had it where, you know, you're in a PD and someone's following behind you when you're on your computer, you know, you feel like you got big brother watching you. Um, we don't want people to feel that way. We trust them as adults. And so we treat them with respect. And if they're on their phone or they need to step away, we give, I mean, we understand these things. And so you want to remember that um, because, again, you have been working with a different population. This is an adult who would like to be treated as an independent thinker. Yeah. Assume now, best intent. No, no, this is hard because it's all about building the relationships to be able to read the room. I'll give you an example. 
there have been times where I will do a professional development session and I, my icebreaker will be, here's a big bowl of Lego, go have fun, and then we're going to do something with it. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that hasn't worked. How do you know when that is? I don't know if that's using the idea of treating people like kids or not. I know in my for where I am right now, and in the next week or so, I'm going to be doing a big professional development to all my science teachers. And I ask them, what are some icebreakers that you guys would want to do with each other? And they told me to do two truths and a lie. I, is that a kid thing? Is that an adult thing? Is that a fun thing? I don't know. But when we're looking at putting these things together, I completely agree with you. Knowing how to read the room and knowing how to treat people at their level, but know how to go a little bit above and how a little bit you know, below. And Tiffany said it. If you start getting those eyes rolling, back it off a little, right? And obviously, if I'm teaching a group of middle school kids, yes, I'm walking around to see what they're doing on their screens. I'm not doing that with a bunch of adults. All right, so know how to handle both of those things. Um, Alyssa, what advice do you have for people who might be working with adults for the first time? Yeah, I, I agree with everything you guys said. Working with adults, you know, that was a, a big shift, you know, from going from the classroom and working with, you know, five-year-olds to junior high students. Um, I think the, the best advice I have is to just understand that they are adults, that they're professionals, um, they're experts in their field. And I think as, as a coach, um, especially, you know, at the higher levels where we have adults that are specialized in science or in math, um, they know a lot more about the content that I do. Um, but understanding that my job is to, to teach you a strategy and um, stay current on best practices as your coach and give you something that is going to, that you'll be able to take away and apply to your practice, wh whatever it may be, whether you're a math teacher, a music teacher, a health teacher, whatever it may be, um, you're the expert. I'm here to help support you in the delivery of, of your content. Um, and then again, just, you know, treating everybody with respect, um, letting them know that, that you are not higher than them. Nobody sits high enough to look down on anyone else and that we're all here to learn from each other. I, one of my favorite parts of um, coaching, honestly, is getting to see all of the wonderful things teachers are doing in their classrooms and broadcasting that and letting them know that like you are all doing great things and I'm gonna share this with somebody else. Um, so, you know, really talking them up and just uh, being their biggest cheerleader. Ladies, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show today, going through not only what you should be doing as a coach, but some of those things that we can kind of put in the back of our head and avoid. I think that's important. I would love to have you guys come back on the show, perhaps as the school year is starting up. Maybe we can do a list of the seven things that you want to be doing as we're starting off the school year. Um, Alyssa, where can we go to find out more information about your team, your school, how we can get a hold of you guys? Absolutely. Um, we, you can follow us on Instagram at Creative Solutions Squad. Um, we're on Facebook at Creative Solutions Coaching. Um, we have a LinkedIn as well. Um, and then I think, Jeff, you have our, our website. We have a Kajabi website. It's got all of our information about how to work with us and connect with us. Um, and has all of our handles on there. So we would love for you guys to follow us, work with us. And um, we are here to help you grow. That is our theme. And and we know everyone's going to have a great start to their summer and school year. And congratulations to all the new coaches out there. Um, you're going to do great. Ashley, before I ask you for your social networks and stuff like that, I want to ask you one last question. If you are a new coach who just got a new job, what's the first thing that you're going to be doing come July 1st? What, what are the, some of those first things that you would want a coach to be thinking about or doing as they're starting to prepare for that next year? The biggest thing is, is that, you know, start start looking at the role, um, seeing if you can reach out. If you have a team already, reach out. If you can meet with your principal, meet with your principal. Um, you know, take a look on social media. Follow, follow. You know, people like us. You know, we we've tried it, and so you know, really look at. You know, we we've shared some reels. We're going to share some tips. Um, we've also started a. Um, um, 
growth starter course. So if you are a new instructional coach, we have a course um, that is found on our website and it would give great insight into um, what kind of that first, those first steps would look like. Tiffany, where can we learn more about some of the great things that you're doing? I understand you've got some pretty amazing things going on these days. Well, yes, it's amazing to be part of Creative Solution Squad and to have our course. Um, that has been an exciting thing because, like you said before, they are an amazing group of coaches. And so I love working with these wonderful women to create growth in our school community and beyond. But yes, I am also an author. And as an author, I am Phoenix Blue. So I can be found at Phoenix Blue Inc. And uh, I do write fiction and nonfiction as well. Uh, but I want to go back to that lovely question that you asked, because you said, what would I do? And I, I must say, I would definitely get as much PD as I could. So if that was taking courses and reading books and of course, being an author, I'm going to push books, of course. But I would also say I would do a little cheating. I would go to the website and find out who am I going to be working with? Are there names there that I could learn ahead of time? What roles are they in? Kind of do a little research behind the scenes because relationships are going to be key from the start. My advice to anybody who's out there, take July, cut it in half, sleep for the first couple of weeks. It's going to be a long, long, long road ahead. And most of this stuff that we've been talking about, about meeting with your principals, trust me, as soon as July 1st comes, they're on vacation. So read a good book. Re read the book that I'm coming out with. Check out a couple of good podcasts. Subscribe to this one. And I hope you guys have a chance to check out all the great stuff. All the links that were mentioned today are going to be over in our show notes. You can find out more information about this and all of our 270 plus shows for Ask the Tech Coach are going to be found over on teachercast.net forward slash podcast. Check it out and all the other great shows on the TeacherCast Educational Network. And that wraps up this episode of Ask the Tech Coach on behalf of Alyssa, Ashley, Tiffany, and everybody here on TeacherCast. My name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.